Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus, you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Hello guys, welcome back. So today it's one of my impromptu, pretty much unedited videos where I do an unboxing, often of a vintage fragrance that's come in the post. And this one has, is no exception because this is very much a vintage classic, a discontinued gem, something of a legend. And it's the first time I've uh, added this to the collection. Very excited. Uh, before we get into that, don't forget I've got a code for you guys. Uh, it's a new code now. It's 5 Mr. Smelly, all one word, uh, capitals. And that gives you 5% off at Executive Shaving website here in the UK where uh, just 5% all off all the fragrance products that they sell there and it's a great place actually to buy very affordable in, well in many cases really really low priced fragrances that are really great some of the aftershave splashes and stuff the extra line of Italian fragrances are excellent and this one's getting some real talk Le Monde by their own brand kind of think of a cross between Beau de Jour and Rive Gauche Pour On by YSL really really superb fragrance so check out the link in the description uh, five Mr. Smelly gets you 5% off all fragrances on the site. They ship in the UK and EU. Let's talk about this fragrance then. So you can see my backdrop here. I've lined up some fragrances that will be relevant to discuss. You probably already guessed what it is, maybe, due to the three fragrances that I've lined up here. So let's have a look at the package. There it is. Um, just to do a quick bit of chat about the house then. No, let's open it first, otherwise you're just looking at an envelope. Let's get stuck in. Okay, I actually ripped this one open thinking it was something else, and then realized it's the one I was saving for the unboxing, so not much to see in terms of getting into the envelope. But here is the product. So can you guess what it is yet? Let's find out. I'm just gonna use scissors. Here we go. Seems well wrapped. Oh, yes, it's got the, the cellophane and everything. Okay, so here we have, bought on eBay this week, Gucci Pour Om. It's a third, just a 30 mil travel spray, and it appeared virtually or very, pretty close to unused. It came from Belfast, sunny Belfast in Northern Ireland, and arrived promptly. So I was very lucky to pick this up. I think it was a price of £40 plus postage for a 30 mil, it's a small size, but it'll do me for the collection. And one that's really hard to find, if you do find it online, uh, it's often very highly priced and you know probably overpriced really. It's, it's got a great reputation, but uh, you know 250 quid for a bottle, maybe a bit cheap, uh, a bit steep, I mean. But it's up to you, isn't it? You pays your money, you takes your choice. So let's just talk about the house of Gucci. Sometimes I do a little house history. Of course, it's a, a fashion house, not just a fragrance company. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. So this company was founded back in 1921 by Guccio Gucci, the wonderfully named Guccio Gucci. Um, which is just a brilliant name. I don't know how they thought that one up. He uh, was a, a young guy born out in Italy, but he uh, was in Paris, I think, for a little bit of his life. And then he ended up being a bellboy in London in a prestigious hotel at the end of the 19th century. And there it was while he was unloading some of the luggage of the wealthy clientele that he saw some of the fashions and some of the fantastic, of course, baggage and leather and stuff that was uh, being used at that time. And that got him really interested in that kind of thing. So fast forward quite a bit. And uh, in 1921, he bought a shop and opened it in Florence in Italy, selling mainly leather goods. And the company started out being known for their bags and their belts. Uh, I won't go massively into the whole history of the, the company as a fashion company, but they had a, a very consistently successful history really throughout the 20th century uh, known yeah a lot of the kind of bags and stuff like that are the luggage all that kind of stuff they're really well known for that but clothing too and uh, right at the beginning of the 2000s Tom Ford got involved there I think there'd be a change of ownership I don't think the Gucci family actually own it anymore and Tom Ford was a, an artistic or creative director there and there seemed to be some sort of a sort of a relaunch of the house and so there was something called porno chic Whatever that is, was sort of a, a, a thing that they had going on, apparently. I, I don't actually know much about that. But it's a, a really nice Italian house. Uh, a little bit of a yeah raunchy reputation or you know, not mega traditional like maybe you could say things like Chanel, a little bit more classic, um, you know, Giorgio Armani. These guys, I'd put them a little bit sort of alongside people like... Dolce & Gabbana, a much more modern house, only came out in uh, 1985, that fashion house. A little bit more of a, 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 a punchy, raunchy, edgy fashion house, uh, youthful, vibrant in many ways. Let's have a look at the fragrance in question then. So one of the ones when Tom Ford was artistic director in the same year that this was released, Yves Saint Laurent also released 
Reeve Gosh Poron, which was again under the creative directorship of Tom Ford. Apparently the blurb on Fragrantica says this one was inspired a little bit in terms of Tom Ford's vision by fragrances he remembered from the 70s and 80s. So that's interesting. Well, let's get stuck into it then. So here's how a 30 mil of this one looks, which is really cute. It's got a built-in uh, sprayer. So it's, it's a, yeah, some people might not think this is the most desirable bottle. I'd rather have got a 50 or 100 mil, but it will do me very nicely. And it's, it's got a certain something. So you've got that nice dark brown juice there which is good to see. And um, I'm very much excited to see if this one lives up to the hype. I've tried it a few years ago in a very small sample and I've tried a few things that are supposed to be similar, but I've never really had a chance to get a good go at sniffing this baby. So we're gonna hopefully do that today. Just give you a bit of stuff on the bottom of the bottle there. Not the most, I don't think the bottle design is anything outrageously, amazingly brilliant to be quite frank, but I'm more interested in, well, no, it's got something, it's got something, okay. Fragrances this is compared to, well, here's one that it's not, but I wanted to mention this anyway. By the way, guys, you may not know, there was an original Gucci Porom even before this one. Back in 1976, we had this fragrance, which I'm lucky enough to have the aftershave of. Shares really only the name, and it's a fantastic sheep per fragrance. Really nice citrus and woods in this one, and oak moss. Brilliant stuff. If you can find that, please do check it out. It's a lovely, lovely scent. However, uh, it's only the name that's similar to the one we're talking about today. Uh, and after this, I think it was in uh, 2008, they released Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme, which has now been renamed Gucci Pour Homme. Again, so that's again an, an unconnected scent. This is the one though that nowadays a lot of people really talk about as being really good. There's Gucci Pour Homme 2 as well. And that's also a discontinued fragrance now, but this one is a really rare, hard to find one. Let's talk about the note listing for this scent and then I'll spray it. So 2003 release, Michel Almerac was the perfumer. I'm gonna talk about a couple of fragrances up above on the books there that he also created, which are often talked about as having similarities. Notes though for this Gucci scent, white pepper ginger, pink bay, papyrus wood, oris rhizome, Oris rhizome, I, I don't know what that is, I must confess. Amber, leather and vetiver. So sort of a woody spicy scent you would say from the note listing. Let's spray it. I've actually been waiting a couple of days to do this. I wanted to share it with you, my lovely viewers. Oh, by the way, you may be interested to know the follow up to Gravitas Poron will be out soon and my, probably my next video, I'll be revealing to you guys the uh, note listing and the name, which I've covered up with a fig leaf there of the new release from Norton and Wilson. So stay tuned for more news on that one. Okay, let's check this scent out then. Here we go, we do three sprays. One, two, three. Squirt, squirt, squirt. It's a hat trick. Okay, let's give it a little time to air out there. Yeah, okay, really, really nice. I definitely pick up on vetiver, it's smooth. It's a little bit spicy. There's a, there's a hint of sweetness in here. Maybe the amber is just kind of a sweetness. And there's a little bit of freshness, but not really any citrus. I like that vetiver, maybe a hint of ginger. It's really, really classy and grown up stuff. Doesn't smell like a 70s or 80s fragrance to me, as Tom Ford maybe was, was saying it might be influenced by those, but. It smells really good on first impressions. Let's just talk about ones that it's compared to. So in the same year, I think, or maybe 2002, uh, Michel Almerac also created Rochas Louis. That one is similar, a little bit more creamy and sweet in the base. This one's rather dry, actually, Gucci Pourom. And this also has a little bit more citrus freshness in the opening. I really, really like that. And again, very hard to find. Doesn't quite have the hype of Gucci's one. And another great option here, if you can't find the one I've got, uh, in the video today, Bentley for Men Absolute. Can't remember the year, maybe 2015, 14. Really, really good fragrance, same perfumer. And many people say it's very, very similar. And I, on first impression, I have to agree. They, they share this woody, ashy undertone, which is rather pleasant. Very grown up, very smooth. I'll have to check out performance. It's a, a perfect balance of woods, spices, peppery, aromatic, manliness. I don't think that smells at all dated to me, so I think that would be great for uh, modern wear completely in, in this day and age. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with wearing that one. It's your signature scent if you can uh, track down enough bottles to do that. But the Bentley 
seems somewhat similar. I'm not sure yet if I would prefer this one to Rochas Louis, which is a real favourite of mine, but so happy to add this to my collection. I should have had the box on the screen there as I did the, vid the video there. And I'm, I like to have the box and everything from the collector point of view, a bit geeky. But yeah, really, really pleasant stuff. Well done to Gucci for this one, but not well done for discontinuing it, you naughty people. Guys, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below. Don't forget, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.